The different types of chemical bonds can mainly be divided by their strengths. Covalent and ionic bonds are relatively strong, and hydrogen bonds and van der Waals interactions are relatively weak. First, let's look at covalent bonds. A covalent bond occurs between two atoms that share a pair of electrons. So, in this picture, these two hydrogens share these two electrons, forming a covalent bond. A nonpolar covalent bond occurs when the atoms bonding have a fairly similar attractive pull on the electrons. So the hydrogen will pull on these electrons, and this pull is called electronegativity. So a simple example of a nonpolar covalent bond would be two hydrogen atoms, as shown, or two oxygen atoms. To add a little more complexity, CH4 is also a nonpolar covalent bond, and it looks something like this. The reason CH4 can be a nonpolar covalent molecule is because the four hydrogens um, balance out the pull of electrons around the carbon. So a polar covalent bond occurs when one atom in the bond has a stronger pull on electrons than the other atom. In other words, one atom is more electronegative than the other. Water is a perfect example of polar covalence. As we have learned, the oxygen in the water is um, a lot bigger, so has a lot stronger of a pull on electrons than the two hydrogen atoms in a water molecule. So although the two hydrogens and the oxygen are all supposed to be sharing the electrons, the oxygen kind of hogs the electrons, and the electrons end up spending a lot more time chilling with the, the oxygen and that gives the oxygen a slightly more negative charge and the hydrogens a slightly more positive charge as shown here. Okay, single and double covalent bonds are exactly what they sound like. A single bond is a sharing of one pair of electrons. A double bond is the sharing of two pairs of electrons between two atoms. Carbon dioxide has a double bond between the carbon and each oxygen. So CO2 looks like this, C double O double O. There's also triple bonds, which means there's a sharing of three pairs of electrons, or you can think of six electrons being shared between the two atoms. And um, nitrogen gas is an example of that. N2 looks like this, N triple bond N. So triple bonds are stronger than double bonds, and double bonds are stronger than single bonds. Ionic bonds are formed between an anion and a cation. For example, table salt, NaCl, is an ionic compound before, formed between Na plus and Cl minus. Sounds simple, but ionic bonds are a little more complicated. There isn't really any such thing as a pure ionic bond because all bonds have some degree of covalent bonding. You can think about it this way. Ionic bonds are more or less like covalent bonds between two atoms with a really great difference in electronegativity. That means the electrons spend a lot more time chilling with one atom than the other. So NaCl, the electrons spend a lot more time chilling with the Cl than with the Na. This gives the difference of charge between the two atoms. The greater the difference in electronegativity, the more ionic the bond. Weird, eh? Okay, hydrogen bonds are also a little confusing. They aren't exactly bonds. They're called bonds, but they are, they are really just attractive interactions, so they aren't as strong as ionic bonds. They're really important to life, though, not just when it comes to water, so look out for them. Lastly, Van der Waals interactions aren't bonds either. As their name says, they are merely interactions and the weakest of all chemical interactions. These interactions can occur between two dipoles. What is a dipole? Um, let me use a water molecule as an example for a dipole. This refers to the uneven charge between uh, within the molecule. So, for example, in the water, the oxygen is more negatively charged, hydrogen is more positively charged, and that forms a dipole. Um, these dipoles don't just happen in water molecules, they happen in a lot of different molecules, um, particularly polar molecules, and when there is an interaction between the negatively charged side of one molecule, um, one dipole, and the positively charged side of another dipole, this creates the van der Waals interactions. Um, water is a bit of a bad example because 
the dipoles actually create hydrogen bonding, but in any other molecule other than water, it's a van der Waals interaction. So when van der Waals interactions are very few, like if there's only one van der Waals interaction, it's very easily breakable. Like as we already said, it's the weakest of all chemical interactions. But do not underestimate their strength, because the strength of millions of van der Waals interactions is what allows a gecko to scale a wall.